you don't have time to, to create it. But for most of what we do, especially since we're going to have multiple operating periods, there will be a incident action plan for each and every operational period we have. Today's operational period is going to um, run essentially from 1300 Zulu. Get in that habit, everything we're going to do is in Zulu time. Um, 1300 Zulu today to 0100 Zulu tomorrow, um, which means we're going from 8 until 8. We're going to max out your duty day. This is ICS Form 200, the very beginning. Now I've moved on to the 201. Here's the situation summary. Usually down here, this will be a um, just a brief statement of what's going on. You know, record flooding is occurring, people are in danger, to send help, something along that lines. In this case, we're going to do the today's operational period is the classroom portion here. We will take breaks because I'm a firm believer that your attention span is directly correlated to the comfort level in your tush. Um, we'll take breaks at 50 past the hour for 10 minutes. No, we don't have a combat mission, but we do have a national security mission. We have multiple national security missions. Okay, the aerial photographer, and now we're calling it the aerial photographer slash videographer, is the person that's, that's going to deliver this image. And, and you're going to hear me refer to it as a product because people are paying us to do this. They're essentially digital SLRs, um, what used to be the old 35 it's millimeter camera, now it's digitized. Um, you should be able to talk about that feature. You should be able to set that camera up properly. And we're going to talk about things that are photography based that may be a little bit foreign to you. I noticed from your drawing you did a while ago that also from this it's showing shooting from the right window. Yeah, I don't know why they're doing that. Um, that's a, I guess that's saying that the observer's doing that. The position of the scanner photographer is in the left and rear seat. The standard is that half a mile, three quarters of a mile standoff. There's a good example of a bird's eye. Now you can kind of get a feel for how uncomfortable that would be, looks like. And that's assuming that they're shooting from the right um, window, which shouldn't be. A light condition like this outside and I'm flying over a target, that shutter speed may slow down. In which case, my picture is going to get blurred. You got to remember, you're moving at 90 knots. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> and it happens. I'm waiting for some well-minded citizen civilian to bring it back to us, just covered in mud and crunched with the Civil Air Patrol sticker on it. Yeah, but it hasn't happened yet. Yeah. So they scraped the sticker off. You need that bag. I can't stress this enough. I hear this all the time. Well, taking pictures on the ground is exactly the same as taking pictures in the air, so the principles on the ground will be exactly the same as the ones in the air. Negative, Ghost Rider. The pattern is full. Okay? When you take pictures from the air, the principles are different, and the equipment applications are different, and we want to make sure that you understand that. This is where I tend to set my camera up a little different, but automatic will adjust to this, and we shouldn't be taking pictures in this kind of light condition anyway. No. <clears throat> okay, here's, here's, the, here's where megapixels come from. Okay, the more, the more detailed your camera has the ability to take. Uh, the typical iPhone camera now, believe it or not, is up to about 8 megapixels which is you can take a really good photo with one of these. Um, <clears throat> the minimum that I recommend for any aerial photography mission is 12 megapixels. So we're going to talk about the relationship between aperture, <coughs> ISO speed, and your shutter speed. Now, if we were all professional photographers, we'd care about that. We're not, and I don't. So. We're going to just spend a little bit of time on them so that you understand it. We're going to talk about the pre-focus and how to use that to your advantage. Remember, autofocus is your friend. 
when you autofocus, you can pre-focus ahead of time, and it becomes a great thing. We'll talk about how to use that. We'll talk about the various exposure modes that you have on your camera, and we'll talk about how to select them. Unfortunately, it's different on every camera, and every person in this room has a different camera. Let's talk about video ownership and images. This is kind of important. If we are taking images for a training mission, every photo you take is the property of the Civil Air Patrol exclusively. They can't be released or given to anybody else without permissions. That's kind of important to remember. That means you don't put them on Facebook. You don't share them with a buddy. Hey, I flew over to your house and we took a picture of your house on a training mission. You just broke the rules, not only in the videography part, but you just did something for personal use in a cap aircraft, which is a violation of 60-1. Um, today, we're going to emphasize safety. Um, I know you guys get pound, safety pounded to the point where it, it almost stops being fun. Um, I'm a big believer in results-based safety. You know, we should be addressing specific issues. Every, you guys already know the safety, the general everyday safety stuff. Um, so our rally point today will be the emergency management trailer. Okay, so there has to be geotagged. And then, if this were a, a mission where they want us to do that, once you've geotagged and processed your photos, then you send them to HDDS. It's just a storage file. It's about HDDS. You must geotag and process your photos using a photo processing program. Okay. The one we use is Argus. Um, there are a lot of others out there, and you're going to use the CAP processing program because that's the nationally taught standard. Right. It goes to the shop center over here, so that's, that's where this main section is. Okay, so what's, what's, what, what's your game plan? How do you want me to go? How Let's do you want fly, to fly four square around this section, and then... So we'll be, we'll be coming from this direction up here. 25 yeah. Okay. We've got a tower here, 1304. Yes, somewhere. 1365 to, to the east is there. Can you say it, the ele this elevation is 2500 or do you want us at 2500? No, we want to be at 2500. Oh, okay, okay. MSL. Okay. So what's, what's, what's the height of the tower that you're talking about? It's 1304. Okay. 1304, yeah. Okay. Okay, so so we got the city located now, and then what do you want to do? We do a four square uh, target on it. What are we What are we looking for? We're looking just to take pictures of the city itself. So we want to square the north side, the east side, the south side, to the other side. 